Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to another Be Connected session. I'm with you as always, your host, Emily. I work at the City of Marion Libraries, and today we are talking about getting online with movies, music, and podcasts. We're going to talk all about streaming, going to look at how to find podcasts, what they are, um, what the best subscription services are for watching films and TV shows, as well as some great services for music. Uh, let's get started. Let's not wait any longer. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see I've got my little cat character today once again. So today we're going to start off by looking at the Be Connected website. Everything I teach you here today will be on the Be Connected website that you can peruse at your own leisure in your own time. Uh, we'll look at what streaming is, why it's so popular today and why people love using streaming services. Uh, we'll look at video streaming in particular to begin with. So looking at things like Netflix, Amazon Prime, all these services, as well as free ones like SBS On Demand and Canopy, a great service your library offers for free. Um, we'll look at how to listen to music and podcasts online, the free versions, as well as some subscription services, as well as some podcast recommendations. For those of you who have not uh, yet been introduced to podcasts, I love them myself, so I'll have a chat about a few of the ones we like. Um, and then we'll get into questions if we have any at the end. Once again, please pop in a question at any time. No need to wait till the end, but I will make sure I've checked everyone's by the end of it. Be Connected, why I love Be Connected so much. It's a place where everyone is getting online. Everyone's practicing their skills in a very calm and uh, gentle way. There's no uh, tests or quizzes or anything like that. It's all very relaxed. It has an expansive topic collection. It has beginner to advanced level courses. We're doing somewhat of an intermediate course at this point. Um, easy to use and you can sign up to keep track of your training. So if I may, if my screen will permit, let's share. Ta-da, this is Be Connected. You're welcome just to pop this into Google, beconnected.com.au or just Be Connected, you'll find it. Uh, today we're looking at, if I go down to our topic library, we are looking at some more online skills with online streaming. I don't know if I'll be able to find it right here. But as you can see, there's lots here. Here we go. Watching and listening online is the subheading of our topic for today. Excellent. So that's where you can find it online if you'd like to learn more. Be Connected is great for having um, not only just great online content, but really nice PDFs that you can print off and give to people that maybe don't have access to a computer or aren't as computer literate as they'd like to be. Um, so you can print off uh, PDFs and have them learn that way as well, or you can teach them yourself. So that's Be Connected. Love it so much as we always do. Let's ask, what is streaming? Uh, so essentially, it's just simultaneous download and play. It's a way to play your media, either video, music or otherwise, um, and play it straight away while the rest of it, as the file collects, is still buffering. Um, so you don't have to wait for the whole file to download. It's a very quick way to um, click and go and watch right away. This is why it's so good for things like watching films. Films take a very long time to download. Um, there's so much for it to, a lot of data is taken up by a film, it has a lot of audio and visual aspects. Um, if it's one or the other, like a picture or a, um, a music uh, piece of music, it's a lot different. But if you put them together, they're going to be a large file altogether. So instead of having to wait for a, a movie to load for about an hour or so, <laughs> depending on your internet speed, it says, okay, we'll just start downloading it and you can watch what I've downloaded so far. And then it goes like that. So that's what streaming is. Streaming doesn't have to just be video. It can be music, podcasts, all kinds of things. Anything you download from the internet that can be simultaneously played and downloaded is streaming. So that's what streaming is. And how do we implement streaming? Subscription platforms, places like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus. I'll talk about all those in a second. Um, but these ones are pay per view. You're paying um, in order to get the content, to get the films, to get the shows. Um, and the way you can be billed is either monthly or annually. They used to do weekly for Netflix, and I'm not sure if that's still the case, but now it should be set up as monthly of about at the lowest tier. If you want to get uh, Netflix, you can get it for $6.99. I think it still is in Australian currency. Um, and then it goes up from there. If you'd like high definition or more devices um, can view it at once. Um, 
the idea with, I'll tell you again about uh, where you can find these services and where you can watch them. Um, but something like Netflix, um, they have both a phone app that can be go, uh, downloaded onto your device, your mobile, tablet, something like that, as well as a uh, desktop version where you can watch it on your laptop or home computer. And then after that, you can also get it on your smart TV. Um, and I'll talk about smart TVs as well, but they're very popular now. Um, almost every TV you buy is a smart TV or has smart capabilities, meaning of course that it can connect to the internet. That's what makes it smart. Um, but I'll talk about that in a bit more depth at the end. Um, you can pay by card or through PayPal if you're wanting to sign up for a subscription. Um, each of the services that I'll look at in just a second offer different uh, film series documentaries um, and they offer exclusive content per service. So Netflix is gonna have different shows than Amazon Prime and that's just a licensing issue. Um, uh, I don't believe they can share content as a general rule. So if you want uh, one of everything, you're going to have to download and subscribe to every single platform. Um, but they also offer high definition video and um, ability to download as well for some uh, platforms. I know Netflix does. It has an app and you can save the videos or the TV shows that you want to watch onto your phone and watch them offline. So if you've got a long, a long drive or a flight that you have to take and you don't have connection to the internet at the time, you can download beforehand and then go off and watch it um, while disconnected from the internet. So that is the general overview of a subscription platform. Let's have a look in depth at what they offer um, per service. So here on the right hand side, I have a series of um, not networks, what do we call them? Services, I suppose. Uh, Stan, Netflix, Apple TV Plus, uh, Disney Plus, Foxtel Now and Prime Video are the more prolific ones. There are other ones like Hey You and a few others I don't know the names of um, because they're a little less popular. Um, but these are the big hitters for sure. Um, they all have a mixed uh, content, great for kids and adults. Something like Disney Plus really tailors to kids. Um, a lot of Disney films generally are, and they're very family friendly. Um, so Disney Plus, for example, is um, a bit special here in that they only um, show their own content, only stuff that is owned by Disney, made by Disney, Disney certified, goes on to Disney Plus. Um, whereas something like Netflix, Stan, um, Foxtel, for example, they will have shows that while a few of them will be, or many of them, will be made by that group, they'll also host other shows and films that didn't belong to them, they just bought the rights to. So you get a mix of everything really. Um, they each can offer you a free trial, which is nice. So you can find out what you'd like. Um, so you can have a one week trial before being billed and after that it will bill your credit or PayPal account. Um, I recommend using PayPal if you've not set it up already, it's really handy. PayPal is essentially an extra um, standee between you and the seller. Um, if anything were to go wrong between your money traveling to the seller, um, PayPal can intervene and fix things up for you really quickly. It's very trustworthy. Um, the seller, so for example, Netflix will have to pay PayPal in order to have it available on their website as a payment option option, um, meaning that they do have to pay money to use it. We don't have to, totally free for us as a consumer level, um, but for them to have it on their account, on their, uh, on their website, they have to pay for it, which kind of just adds an extra bit of trust. Um, knowing that they're happy to lose a bit of money in order for extra safety for the consumer is very, you know, comforting. I feel I trust, um, I end up trusting a website more if it offers PayPal. Um, if you find that you don't know what shows you want to watch, but you're keen on getting uh, one of the subscription or many more than one, I have two at home. We have Netflix and Prime, Amazon Prime. Um, you can find out what shows are on what by looking online at justwatch.com.au. I was checking it out the other day. It's very good. Um, you just find the show you'd like to see, or you can click on the service. So you can click on Stan, for example, and it'll tell you all the shows that are available in Australia on Stan. Um, this is really good if you have a particular taste in shows or you've been looking out for that one show like um, Picnic at Hanging Rock. I couldn't find for the longest time and I was like, I'm sure I've, I've seen it somewhere. I wanted to watch the newest series and it was on Foxtown now and I could find that out by looking at Just Watch. So it's nice and easy to find that way. So those are subscription platforms. If there aren't any questions about those, I think we'll get into the more fun side, which are free to view platforms, the ones where you don't have to pay anything. <laughs> Always exciting. I love free stuff. Always happy to accept um, watching free videos instead of paying money to view them. Um, 
you just need to log in using an email and a password. Um, I was trying to watch a show last night and it was on, I think it was on nine now, which is channel nine's uh, digital version of their channel. Um, and you could watch anything that they'd had up there. I think they had an episode of something that aired two weeks ago and it was still good to watch. And I went, oh yeah, I'd like to watch that. Um, but then when you went to click play, it said, please log in and make an account and then you can watch. So they do ask that you have an email and a password. Um, no payment required, of course, but it does contain adverts, um, much like watching TV um, on a TV. <laughs> you get ads in between the breaks of the show, um, which is just enough to pay for the network. It pays for the shows to keep running. Um, so I don't mind watching ads necessarily. Um, they can, you know, jump in and be annoying, but you don't have to watch too many, at least from what I've found. Um, they have a wide variety of shows and film, and you generally view it in a standard definition video. Um, some of these channels will offer a paid version. Many don't. Something like ABC IV doesn't offer a paid version. It's all one tier. Everyone's at the same level. Um, other places may ask for money if you'd like to have high definition and pay for no ads sort of thing. So rather than watching the ads in order to make money, you could just pay them in that way. They make money that way. Um, so let's have a look at a few that I recommend. So very general stuff like iView, we've got SBS On Demand, especially good for um, foreign films. They're brilliant on SBS On Demand. SBS has got good stuff anyway. Um, Nine Now, Seven Plus for your general shows. And then I put in YouTube as well because YouTube is a great place to watch um, maybe not just shows, um, but a lot of online video that can be quite helpful in your day-to-day -day life. I found I learn a lot um, by watching YouTube videos about, you know, DIY or learn how to do this or what does this mean sort of thing. Um, so if you've not had a play on YouTube, have a look. Look up some of your favorite music artists. Um, you can look up anything really. People can upload whatever video they'd like onto YouTube. It can be made for YouTube. Um, they've got their own original TV shows on YouTube as well. Um, but generally I use YouTube just to, you know, follow people around in their day-to-day -day lives, people living in other countries, living different lives, um, performances, things like that. Everything's on YouTube these days for the most part. Um, so it's a great place to check out. Have a look at that. See if you like YouTube. Um, and I'll talk about Canopy in a bit. Canopy is our library services, free uh, film, and I don't know if it has TV shows, but it definitely has films and documentaries um, to view for free with your library card. But I'll talk about that in depth a bit more. Um, so free to view platforms are great for streaming catch up TV. Um, as I was saying, I was wanting to watch a show that I'd missed the other day. So I jumped on one of the channels and could watch it back really easily. Um, so then I think, now this is an odd number. Um, I pulled this out because with SBS, I had tried to watch a film, but it had been aired more than two years ago, which is their cutoff point for how long they store it on their website or how long they have the uh, license for it. So it's different per uh, streaming site. So I found that two years has been kind of the average for some of these, especially with films, but television shows are going to have a lot, uh, a shorter shelf life because there's so many more episodes that need to stay on the website for an amount of time. So um, in order to free up the backlog or their, um, their memory storage for the website, they can't keep everything on there. So it's nice to find it when you can, um, but every now and then you just miss it um, as I had before. Um, all are free, um, free to access, um, but do consider data charges from your provider. All of this, all streaming will be using data. Um, so if you're planning on streaming from your phone or your mobile data plan, um, just be a bit careful of how much you're using. Um, you can find out how much you've used by just going into your data section on your settings um, of your phone. That way it can tell you how much you've used this month and it'll tell you if you've gone over and you usually get a text message or an email from your mobile provider, your internet provider, if you've gone over or if you're approaching the limit um, and you may need to top up with data. Um, if you have a home uh, package sort of set up with Wi-Fi, a modem, all of that, the home Wi-Fi, um, sorry, home data package is usually a lot larger than a mobile package. So um, it might be worthwhile connecting via Wi-Fi to your modem and streaming that way. I know I only like to stream when I'm at home um, because using my mobile data, I generally only save it for when I have to use it out and about. I don't like to be without it. So um, I don't tend to watch anything while I'm out and about. It's only when I get home, I watch something. 
Or if you've got something like Netflix where they let you download, you can download the show before you head out um, uh, via your Wi-Fi and using your home mobile, home modem, <laughs> um, and therefore saving you your data on your phone for emergencies. Um, so you can watch via the desktop website, dedicated app, or on a smart TV. I'll talk about smart TVs once again in a couple of slides. Um, but yeah, you can watch either by their own website, so on the desktop website, as I do with like SBS and iView, I jump onto the actual internet browser, or you can download the app for them. All of these have an app. Um, almost everything has an app version of itself these days, um, and you can view it that way as well. I find that apps are very nice to navigate using the online version that's on the computer on a desktop screen is a bit more clunky, um, but they're very nicely uh, streamlined on a phone or a tablet device. Okay, I think we talk about Canopy next. Here we go. So Canopy is your library's streaming service. It's essentially um, free films that you get with your library. Um, so what you can do is you sign on with your library card and then it asks you to make a regular account using an email. The idea of using your library card first is going, okay, my account is connected to Marion Library Service or the public library service. I believe it's just Marion and a few other councils that have a subscription to Canopy. You have to opt in to get it. Um, so you say, yes, I'm part of the Marion Library Service, tick. And then it goes, excellent. You get this many credits a month to use because your library is paying for the films and then you can just watch them. Um, you get 10 films per month. It used to be eight, it's been up to 10, which is pretty cool. Um, you get 10 films you can watch in a month and then it resets at the, the first of the next month. So at the beginning of the month, it resets. Um, after you unlock a film, so you click play on a film, you will have three days to watch it and you can watch it as many times as you like in those three days. And then when the three days are up, you'll have to spend another credit in order to access it again. Uh, you can watch it on your computer, mobile or tablet. So let me open up Canopy for you here. Canopy. You can just type Canopy right into um, your search bar. So what I've done, let me share my screen. Da, 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 da. There we go. This is Canopy. This is what you'd be seeing if you looked it up just by Google, as I have. Now, what I'll do, I'll go get started, please. Support of your public library. There we go. Find your library. I believe that for now. It knows I'm in Adelaide. Let's do 5158. That's where we are right now at Hallett Cove. Yeah, that's about right. Ta da! I oh, know, <laughs> I can't find my library. All right, let's do uh, 50, what is it, 5046? Trying to think of what Marion Council would be. Oh, here we go, City of Marion Libraries, Marion Library Service. There we go. So I go get, this is my library, select this library, and then it should ask for my library card. There we go. Now I've already got an account signed in. So what I'll do, I'll just log in really quickly and show you what it looks like. Um, if any of you have not used Canopy before, it is great fun. I love it myself. Um, it has some really cool documentaries as well as lots and lots of international films. So lots of um, cool cinema that you wouldn't see normally. Let me log in here. Pardon my typing. <laughs> Should have had it set up before I know. So go. Here we go. <laughs> See if I can log in just fine. Yep, welcome back. Good, it knows me. Cool, let me bring my screen back over. Ta -da. This is what it looks like when you've logged in. Um, we've been watching films online, so I currently only have seven credits to use. So seven credits left this month. So seven good films to watch, which is exciting. I don't know how many films you can watch in a month, but 10 is sort of at the higher level for me. I don't know if I've ever watched 10 films in a whole month. Maybe if I've been watching um, a series or something like that, I can watch that much. Um, but they're all sorted by genre, themes. For example, a uh, festival spotlight for Toronto, Toronto, <laughs> Toronto International Film Festival, all kinds of stuff. So if you don't find anything you like on the front page, what you can do, jump into browse, click. It'll open up movies, documentaries, gets its own column here education there are even some courses on here as well so business courses arts courses film studies things like that arts and science all kinds of stuff so say if you're interested in we had a french group in this week 
So if I go into world cinema, I should be able to find some alternate language cinema. Oscar winners, French language, here we go. This is what we were showing off to our French group. And from here, they can have a watch and they believe that they must have watched Let the Sun Shine In. There we go. So lots of stuff to explore, all free with your library card. Once again, you just have to click login, sign in with the library card, find Marion Library Service, and then pop in your details and pop in a, uh, an email address, and then you're good to go. And then you'll just sign in with your email in the future. There we go, that's Canopy, love Canopy. I think we're talking about smart TVs now. Here we go. So what are smart TVs? We've got my little scared cat here because it's such a mysterious world of smart TVs. <laughs> Essentially making something smart in terms of technology just means it can connect to the internet. Um, and as well as just connecting to the internet, it can support apps like Netflix, ABC iView. We've got uh, YouTube here, Facebook, Twitter, lots of other ads ads apps um, that it can connect to what it would do it would connect up with your wi-fi as soon as you tell it yes i'd like to connect to the wi-fi you put in your wi-fi password or plug in um, the ethernet cord with your modem attached that way it gets a direct connection um, and then it can connect to the internet and get you digital shows as well as the version you get with a regular signal um, you can also connect these tvs to home gadgets like alexa google home smart lights things like that um, so it can become a coal connected connected package that you have in your home um, and generally almost all tvs you buy now are smart tvs they can connect to the internet um, you'd be hard pressed to find one that couldn't it'd be a much smaller tv um, probably generally just the idea of buying it for a bedroom or something like that um, or inexpensive TVs. They get more pricey as they can connect to the internet and then get better, better screens, larger sizes. Um, but generally, yeah, you'd find most TVs these days must, not must, but will have smart um, capabilities. So that's what a smart TV is. Let's take a bit of a turn. Woohoo! <laughs> And let's talk about where to listen to music and podcasts online. So we've had all of our visual stuff now. Let's do our audio mediums. Media. Here we go. So listen to music online. Where to listen? Um, you can listen to these programs, which I'll point out and notify from left to right. We've got Apple Music, YouTube, Google Music, and Spotify, which is my preference. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. Um, you can listen to all of these either on the desktop version in th through a browser or dedicated program that you can download to your desktop computer um, or on your device by just downloading the app. Everything's on apps, as I said before, um, so you can get the app version of these as well. Um, you can choose from free streaming or paid downloads with all of these. Um, some have limited use um, in the free version just the browsing version, like just to see if you're you know, happy with the service. Um, but they're always very good in the paid version. So with paid downloads, you can get. Um, so something like Apple Music, I mean, all of these you can get free access to. Um, YouTube, and I should say it's YouTube Music is what I'm specifically looking at. Um, you can just listen to music on YouTube, but it's going to be um, a little bit more bulkier to work through. Um, mostly because YouTube is built just to show video content. So while you can have um, YouTube videos with music in them and have uh, full on music videos um, made by the creators of the music originally, um, they're a lot easier to listen to on Google Music. So, sorry, <laughs> not Google Music, YouTube Music. So that's the version I'm referring to today. Um, they're all free to listen to, but require a paid subscription to download the music or listen offline with the music, which is kind of what you want as a general sense. So in order to stop it from streaming, you do have to pay for the same version. Um, but the free tier includes ads and a lower sound quality. So it is worthwhile to find which one you like best and then maybe invest in it by subscribing or paying for the music that you're listening to. But of course, you can get a nice listen in without having to pay anything, which is nice. Uh, my favorite is Spotify. Spotify has everything from uh, music, podcasts, audiobooks, all kinds of stuff. And you can all listen to it with a subscription. Um, I've had mine for about I think it was five years, I said last time, five years or so. And um, I've always loved it. Never tried anything else. <laughs> not wholeheartedly, not thinking that I'd ever get rid of Spotify. Um, and it's very, very good. It's an easy way to listen. Um, you can listen to it again in the free tier, but every third or fourth song will be an ad, which kind of breaks up the enjoyment, I think. That's why I went to it. I kept hearing ads and the ads was the funniest thing. They just say, tired of hearing ads? get Spotify premium. <laughs> and I went, yep, that's me. 
<laughs> I'm the one that is tired of hearing those ads. They weren't even for anything. I had to buy like shampoo or something like that. It was ads for Spotify premium, which makes sense. It's good advertising. Okay. So that's how to listen to music online. These are the apps I recommend. Apple Music, YouTube Music. Yeah, it's called YouTube Music, I'm sure. Google Music and Spotify. There we go. That's S S P O T F. Spotify. I mean, ugh, I could type it out for you. Goodness, I'm just the worst at this. S P O T I F Y. There we go. <laughs> okay, that's Spotify. Love it myself. Let's look at podcasts. Where to listen to podcasts? Um, they're always free to access. There's no payment tier for podcasts. Totally free. You can download and listen to these offline as well. Um, many of these apps, and I'll point them out once again. We've got left to right. We have Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, ABC Listen app, and Spotify once again, because Spotify can do more than one thing, and it's amazing. <laughs> so you can download and listen to the stuff offline. Um, you just have to find what podcasts you like best. Um, many of these apps host podcasts, but few are produced them exclusively, like the ABC Listen app, which only hosts its own shows. So all of these will have um, a podcast you may like. Um, so if you liked, for example, um, I'm what podcast am I listening to? I'm listening to a podcast called Not Another D&D Podcast. It's a real play Dungeons and Dragons show. It's very nerdy. Um, but you could find on each of these, one, two, three, but not on the ABC Listen app because ABC Listen only puts on their own radio shows and produced content. So um, uh, it does have about 80 shows on there though. So it's a fairly robust app to have. Um, everything from the morning shows you hear on the radio um, to talk back radio, to chat shows, um, all the way to fully produced productions um, of documentaries and things like that. It's very good. So that's the ABC Listen app. I love it myself. And we'll talk about now. There we go. <laughs> I was like, did I talk more about the ABC Listen app? Yes, I did. So how to download a podcast. When you've decided you like something, um, first find the app of your choice. And again, it could be anything from you know, any one of these is totally fine. Um, again, the ABC Listen app is only going to have their own stuff. So if you want something outside of ABC made content, you'd have to get one of these three. Um, if you look up uh, podcast player, that you're also going to find more programs like this. I just find something like Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, if you have an iPhone, it's good. On, it's really good on an iPhone um, or Spotify, then I would use those just because they're very reliable, nice and clear, great layouts. But any other podcast player you can find is going to be okay. Um, yeah, presenting audio media is really easy for programs to do. Um, and everyone that anyone that makes a podcast, so say our library podcast that we have, um, we put out our production, our, uh, our episodes out to all the podcasting networks, podcasting apps, and they just get uploaded as they do. Um, I'm honestly not sure how that works. <laughs> how does everyone, every network know? But uh, there is a way to post it and have it shared with every other network. So it works out in that way. Um, so you just find an app you like, hit download uh, and press play, essentially. It's one of the more easier things to sort through and play with. Uh, but the ABC Listen app, I really recommend. It's great fun. Lots to listen to. Generally, it's always going to be very educational. You're going to learn something. It's not just sort of uh, mind-numbingly boring <laughs> or anything like that. It's always going to be really good content. Okay, so last thing I'll chat about is our library podcast. We love it so much here. It's the best show. Um, so we have a podcast called Literary Anything. It's um, made by Jane and Paula. You can join them each month as they talk about their book of the month, as well as um, surrounding events that are happening within, you know, um, the book industry and any upsets and any awards that have been giving out, things like that. So you can really keep up to date with your uh, literary interests and your book interests and we'll fill you in there. I'll just show you. You can listen to it. You can look it up right now if you're on a computer. Um, it's just on, you can look up literary anything and you can find it either on the City of Marion Council page as well as just typing it into Google. So what I'll do, I'll show you what I've got here. Got it up right now just have to show you. <laughs> I've opened it up on SoundCloud, which is a great place to see podcasts or listen to podcasts, I should say. And I'll just show you. Here we are. Ta -da! Literary anything on a nice big screen. Um, and you can listen to it here right now. I'll just press play. Now I can hear that. And it was very loud. So I don't hope you couldn't hear it either. Um, I'll find out later on if that made a noise. Very scary. Um, 
but you can listen back to the podcast on your desktop browser as I'm doing right now on my screen, or you can download the app um, or any app that can get a podcast player, for example, Spotify, Google Podcasts, um, Apple Podcasts, that's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> had a brain fade for a second. Um, and then you can look up literary anything and have a listen. Um, Jane and Paula are lovely. They've got great voices. So they're really just the best at this and they're brilliant presenters and they keep it really light and fun um, while also giving you some in-depth insights to what they've been reading and why it's important. Okay. So that's our podcast. I've done, I've done my bit. <laughs> I've given them some love. So I think we'll just get over to questions now. So what I'll do, I'll briefly pause my recording as I give our people in the crowd time to type. And if they have any questions, if not, I'll just sit my tea and have a nice time. Uh, but we'll be right back in just a moment. Okay, we've had a question from Crystal just saying that she's had trouble in the past accessing YouTube without paying. So maybe another day would be good to find out how to access YouTube. Yes, it is a great idea. What I'll do, I'll even... I think I can just open YouTube and show you guys. I think that's the quickest way. So for those who, I mean, and you can get the app online as well if you prefer to use a tablet or your phone, but if you're happy to jump on a desktop computer, I'll just type in YouTube. I'll show you what I'm doing exactly so you know the steps and don't feel that you're missing anything. Here we go. I've got a new tab with Google in it. I'm just gonna type in YouTube. Da -da -da -da. So first thing, an ad, I'll skip past that. <laughs> you can tell it's an ad because it has in bold ad. Um, and I generally just go to the actual website, so youtube.com, click on the blue, here we go. I'm gonna get some very random videos. I don't think it's got my own videos. So what you can do, book, open YouTube. And what you can do, say if I wanna look at a cat, <laughs> I wanna watch a funny cat video or something like that. Uh, cats will make your, Laugh your head off. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, you can first, what I check out first is, okay, um, what's the name of the video? How long is the video? Um, in this corner here, it comes up with 10 minutes and two seconds. And I go, ah, 10 minutes of my day. I can, I can share that with cat videos. Um, and then I have a brief look at how many views the video has got, maybe how old it is. So this is three years ago it was published and it has 106 million views. So it's very popular. Um, in comparison, we've got 3 million, 4.7 million. So it's bringing up the most um, relevant videos it thinks I might be interested in. I only put cat in the title for what I'm looking for. If I was looking up for tomato recipe, tomato recipe, tomato what recipe? Yeah, tomato relish. What am I saying? Tomato recipe. And then you'd find some other options. Now, these are far more um, refined than just cat. <laughs> <laughs> so a tomato relish, for example, is going to have less, uh, fewer views. So 25,000 here, uh, 100,000, sorry, 1,000, I should say, not 100,000. Um, uh, but they are more uh, succinct. They are definitely just relish. It's not just cats as a general term. Um, so if I wanted to click on that and click this, I have to turn my volume down because the last thing really blew my ears out. Here we go. <laughs> so let's try... Uh, this one, it looks homemade, very simple. It's got an intro. So what we're doing here, we're looking at, I'll just skip forward to when it's actually tomatoes. There we go, tomatoes on screen. Exactly what I wanted, tomato relish. <laughs> um, what we're looking at here now, you don't have to pay for YouTube. Um, the only time it's asking you to pay is for YouTube premium. That's where you don't have to watch with ads and you get very high levels of um, video fidelity, it's hard to explain. The quality is better if you pay for it. Um, but for me, it gets so good that you don't notice it's getting better. The degree in which it's getting better is beyond kind of your human senses. <laughs> and you go, hmm, that seems like it is good and like crisper and it sounds better, but I can't really tell why. <laughs> so the standard version that you get without having to pay for YouTube is just fine for most people. You can get really high levels of um, screen quality. This one goes up to 720, which is very standard. It's normal. Um, it's 1080. So one, one zero eight zero P, ten eighty P is how people refer to it, is very high. That's HD. That's great for watching on a nice clear screen. Um, and then it goes up further than that, like um, 
goes up to 4K these days, which is the crispest, the clearest you can get. But only if you've got a new monitor, a new screen, will you notice the difference. Um, so no need to go up that high, but you can get that high quality. Um, what I'm looking at here is, are there any ads? For me, there was no ad. An ad will come up in yellow here and play an ad or a little pop-up would come up here. And that's kind of the extent of what your free version is limiting you to, just to having ads. Um, but otherwise, you don't have to pay for YouTube at all. Um, feel free to jump online and have a look um, just by using the browser. But I find that, yeah, when I'm looking at it on my computer, uh, my mobile phone, um, it almost always comes up with, do you want to pay for premium? And I go, no, <laughs> I'm totally fine with the version I have. Thank you. Um, but yeah, they're always trying to get you to pay a little bit extra because of course it is a free service and they want you to um, pay for it so they can get some money. That's just the way, <laughs> way these companies work. Um, but it's a bit of a funny thing because YouTube isn't, um, the, the, the videos that go onto YouTube are technically somewhat owned by YouTube because they're on there, but they're actually owned by the creator still. And that could be anyone. It could be me. It could be Marion Council. We've got our own YouTube page if you want to find us, Marion Council, um, City of Marion, I should say. But it's not YouTube that owns those videos, so they can't exactly charge you for them in the same way that something like Netflix could because Netflix, the only reason it's on there is because Netflix paid to have it or have it made, um, But whereas YouTube is more of a community online network set up. So it's a bit harder for them to charge, charge you for essentially what would have happened anyway. People will put videos up somewhere. Okie doke. I think that's okay for questions. Thanks for asking that, Crystal. It's nice to explore what you are all interested in and like to know more about. So hopefully I answered something you were interested in there. There you go. And I think we'll finish up with how to stay connected with us. So if you find that um, you'd like to learn more, please jump onto our City of Marion Library's Facebook and Instagram page if you use those networks. If not, check out our What's On page on our City of Marion website. So City of Marion gov.au.com.gov. .com, no, .gov yeah, that's us. You'll find us there. Um, you can subscribe to our Library Loop newsletter. We put out a newsletter every month, nothing, nothing too much. We just say what's going on, what's new, what we're excited about, what books we've been reading, things like that. Or you can visit or call us, um, visit a branch or call us on 83756755. That is the Hallett Cove branch number. So you can give us a call up here and say hi to me if you'd like. And I think that is all I have for you today. So thank you, everyone. We're going to have a lovely, nice sleep in the sky. Very pretty. Uh, <laughs> so I'll all leave you. Uh, I'll leave you all there. Oh, here we go. I've got a little finish up from Crystal. Thanks, Crystal. Pretty easy. Yeah, um, sometimes that pay option um, will just pop up by itself. It'll be nothing that you've clicked. It'll just arrive because they thought maybe they want to pay for the service now. Um, but yeah, oh, that's great. No, not a problem, Crystal. Thanks for your comments there. So lovely. All right, everyone, I will pause my recording and finish up. So everyone have a lovely afternoon. I'll see you in the next one and happy learning along the way. Bye.